I too have um, experienced that in almost all of my classes uh, since I teach theater. Uh, I require, we require students to see a live performance and to critique it. And then I have a critique guideline that I would, you know, like uh, them to follow. And for some, to some degree they do, um, but I have felt that, that many of the critiques fall short of what I would really like to see. I would like them to hone their thinking skills. I'd like to, uh, them to hone their ability to look at text, live text performed. Uh, and I realize that even though they're theater students and they like theater, they haven't seen as much as I think that they probably should have in order to really critique in the way that I would like them to critique. You know, so I get uh, pat phrases like, that was great, that was right on. Oh, I thought this, the, the lights were really uh, beautiful. And, you know, without the deeper things. So at some point I said, okay, we need to be reading critiques of plays done by professionals or semi-professionals or whomever that models for them uh, the kind of deeper thinking that I, I would like. So in academics, we oftentimes make thinking far more mysterious than it needs to be. So in this next video, I'm going to share a micro experience, which is a useful tool to use in any course. And we're gonna use this tool to demystify thinking and help students think well, learn well, and perform well. Check it out. Professor Mingo's theater courses were packed with students eager to be the next great film director but a roadblock prevented students from succeeding in his course. After viewing a film or play for class, students offered shallow responses as critiques. These responses demonstrated the students were unable to properly analyze theatrical productions. In previous years, Professor Mingo tried to solve the problem by having students read experts' critiques of films with the hopes that they would absorb the ability to critique but this tactic didn't work. However, Professor Mingo finally found a great solution. He used a micro experience to equip his class with the proper ways of thinking for his course. Here's what he did. First, Professor Mingo instructed his students to select a movie from a list that he provided. Then he instructed them to watch the movie and to be prepared to provide a critique during the next class. After the students provided their critiques, Professor Mingo used a grid to categorize their thinking, thus visualizing the criteria that powered their analysis. Next, Professor Mingo performed the game-changing act. He expanded the grid to show them the additional criteria that percolated in his mind as he watched the film. The students were amazed by Professor Mingo's ability to extract so much more out of the same movie they watched. However, Dr. Mingo's work was only beginning. He used the Think Well, Learn Well diagram to help them add function and words to the mental work they were doing. Next, he led them in a metacognitive conversation, explaining how the criteria in his mind function as lenses that allowed him to see movies through multiple categories. Then he instructed each student to read an expert film critique. But this time, they were to try and construct the analysis grid that powered the critics' judgment. Finally, Dr. Mingo capped off the experience right where he began. He had the students watch another film, but this time, they had to use the analysis grid they created. The micro experience was a huge success. The students not only learned content, they expanded their capacity to think analytically and evaluatively. Professor Mingo was pleasantly surprised later in the year when his students submitted their final research papers. They took the micro experience to the next level by using the creating level of the Think Well, Learn Well diagram to guide them as they prepared their research paper. The micro experience became a staple of Professor Mingo's instruction and so did students' renderings of excellent critiques.